In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of Runway's References tool and show you just how powerful it is. It allows you to get perfect consistency, I've got loads of awesome tips and tricks to share, and how you can create some really unique videos using Runway's tools. Okay, let's get into it. When Runway introduced their new references tool, I thought it was just another cool feature, but when I started using it, I realized just how insanely powerful it is. How references works is extremely simple. For an example, you can give it images of a character, an object, and a landscape, along with a prompt, and it will generate an image which is consistent with the images and prompt you give it. It's pretty incredible. I've done loads of tests using myself and different characters, so first of all, let's just check out using an image of myself. So click on Generate Image first. To get the best results, make sure the image of your character is fairly well lit and is on a simple background. When you add any image, it will go down into this References tab down here. So as you can see, I've already got some characters down there, and I've already named them. When you first put an image in, it won't have a name, but to give it a custom name, you just have to click on the pencil icon and then just give it a custom name. Now let's put myself into a scene. My favorite method is doing the at symbol, then it will pop up with your different characters. So I've put in the prompt to Jack is walking through a forest with cinematic lighting, shallow depth of field, close up shot. And I'll try another example, but in this one I've put in the prompt Jack as a knight, cinematic with professional color grading, muted color palette, shallow depth of field. And hopefully it should put me in knight's armor. Here are the results for me walking through a forest with the cinematic lighting, and they look pretty good. They do have that cinematic feel to them. The camera is maybe a little bit too close to my face, but it looks really good. I really like this shot here, it's got some nice dust particles coming through with that sunlight there. And the good thing is, each image definitely looks like me, so it is nailing the consistency. And here are the images of me as a knight, and it has nailed the prompt. It definitely looks like me, and it's got some really cool lighting in it. So let's have a quick look at multi-reference prompts. You can add up to three reference images. Now I'll add a second reference image. I've added in a location shot, so I've got this image of a river. So I've put into the prompt, Jack is walking through the river in image two, close up shot. So it should combine both images and follow the prompt of putting myself into the river. This fourth image is a bit weird, but the other ones look really good. Now I'm going to add a third reference image. What I'll actually do for this one is use this image of me as a knight. I'll drag that in, use that as the first reference image. I'll add in this image of a hat that I generated, and I'll use that river location again. So I've put in knight is wearing the hat while walking through the river, close up shot. And the results are pretty interesting. So here's the images where I prompted it with close up shot, and I'm pretty happy with them. I think it's done a great job at combining all three reference images to create a kind of believable image. I really like this image up here, and this one has a really cool look to it. But they can get quite funky, as this one here looks like I've got no arms, and these images here are just a wider view version. And they look great, they all look like me, they've got the hat and the armor, so yeah, no complaints. Now let's have a look at creating consistent scenes. Let's say you have a character inside of an environment and you want to create believable, consistent scenes to tell a story. So for this one, I'm going to use one of my custom made characters. She is an elven princess named Gwen. You can create your characters inside of Runway. All you have to do is type in what kind of character you want and create those images. Then you can take those character images and use them in references. So for this character, I've got a close up of her face and then one with her face and more of her original costume. Using the image with her costume in it is good if you want to keep that costume consistent over all of your shots. Otherwise, if you want to change the character's outfit more often, then just use the close up of the face. So I'll show you how to do that now. I've added in the image of my elven character and I've also added in an image of a green sweater that I generated. So I've put Gwen is wearing the green sweater standing outside near the lake, mountains in the background, golden hour, muted natural colors, front angle, shallow depth of field, close up shot. What I've noticed with these images is that on the original image of the character, you could see some of her costume was coming up through her neckline. So it's combined her original outfit with the new image of the green sweater that I gave it. If you want to make sure that her original costume doesn't get added in, all you would have to do is edit out that bit of the image. 
What I'll do now is use this image of the character and hopefully I'll be able to make consistent scenes from this image. For this next scene, I want to show a close-up of the edge of the lake, but make it feel similar to the first image. So when we cut across to these images, it feels like it's part of the same scene. Then for the third shot, I've put, can you show me a close-up of the mountains in the background with shallow focus? And for the last image, I've put a bird's eye view of the woman sitting on the pebbles, looking out over the lake, same color and lighting from image one. Hopefully all of these images should look like they're from the same scene. I am blown away with the images that Runway has generated. As comparing them to the initial image that I gave it, they match the same color tone, they feel like they belong in that scene. It's the best way to get consistency if you want to tell a story, as it allows you to change the angle without changing the style. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure to like it and subscribe to our channels for more videos like this. Okay, back to the video. So let's have a quick look at getting multiple characters in the same scene. So I've got myself, the elven character Gwen, and also this blue alien character I created called Alan. To get them all in the same scene, you just put each character into the three reference slots. So I put Jack, Alan and Gwen are sitting watching a film in a cinema. And it did an awesome job at making us look like we're watching a film together. And here's another one but with a close up view. It's so boring. I'm so tired. It works really well for animated characters as well. I've got a couple of examples. So I created this image of this really cool character. And then I prompted her to be walking through a rainforest with a close up shot. And the images are incredible. What's really cool about this is it's managed to keep that artistic style throughout the whole image. So it's got that kind of rough illustration look to it. And from there, I was able to create even more scenes with this character. And for this character, I created a claymation style old man. And then I generated some locations. So here I have a front porch of a house in claymation style. So it should fit in with the same style as the Bob character. Then I added Bob and the house into the references. Then added Bob is sweeping leaves up in image two. And it gave me some really interesting results. Some of them didn't come out that well, but this bottom left one looks perfect. And here's a few images I've created for his short story. Ah. Uh. Another day, another cleanup. Time to water these flowers. They're looking glorious. Time to dust off these old memories. One cup at a time. That's how we keep going. I'm really happy with how that turned out. And if you're wondering how I made the old man's voice, I just recorded my own voice and then I used Eleven Labs voice changer to change it into an older man. They have loads of different voices that you can change into. So if you'd like to check that out, I've left a link to it down below. One of the coolest things I found out by using Runway's references is how it allows you to create some really cool titles. So for this example, I made up a film title called The Hunt and I wanted to create a title sequence for it. So what I did is I just scribbled down the title on a piece of paper with the kind of composition that I was going for. And then all you have to do is give it a reference of a font that you want to use. So I just went online and found a font that I really liked. And then I just screen grabbed an image of how the font looks. I then added it into references. And then I added a third reference of what I want the background to look like. So then in the prompt, I just said, use the text on image one and write it with the font on image two and use image three as a background. I am stunned with the results. It's pretty incredible that it's looked at the reference image of the font and the really simple drawing of the title I gave it. And it's created these awesome looking images. Now this one, it's misspelled it, but the others are perfect. It's managed to nail the look of the font perfectly. And yeah, I'm just pretty blown away by this, to be honest. This one's really cool. It's put the leaf in front of the text. And then I turned it into a video and it looks insanely good. This could save so much time and just allows it so much creativity when creating a title sequence for your project. And here's some examples from other fonts I've used with different images. Definitely try this out. It's really fun to play around with. So now I'm going to look into some really cool tips and tricks for runaway references. Say you want to have your character in a certain pose, you can add an image of a pose that you like into the references tab. Like in this one here, I've got an image of me as a knight. And then in the prompt, I've put Jack in the pose from image two. 
and the generated images have created a pose which is similar to the one that I referenced it with. It doesn't always work, but it's definitely worth testing out. In some cases, if you're using another reference image with someone's face in it, and you don't want Runway to get confused between the different faces, like in this example here, the best thing to do is to put a black box over the face to get better results. As this way, you can put yourself into that shot, but without Runway getting confused between the different faces. You can also use runway references with animals. As you can see here, I've added in my cat as a reference, so you can have a lot of fun with creating different scenes with your own pets. Now let's have a look at changing the styles. You can add reference images of different styles to then get different outputs like you can see here. You can get really creative with making different styles in your images, and I'm only just scratching the surface on this. Another cool tip is that you can use materials or texture images as a reference and change how you look. As you can see here, I've added in different materials and the resulting images look pretty cool. Another really cool thing you can do is compose your images using 3D assets. So here you can see Runway are showing you how to do it. I haven't tested it out too much. I think it's just a really cool method on getting the exact shot that you're looking for. And I'll definitely be exploring more with this method. And you can even create your own designs. Like this one here, I did a really bad simple drawing of this t-shirt, which looks like a kid's drawing. But as you can see, it's added it onto the character and it's done a pretty good job at keeping the details from the drawing. Now we have all of these incredible images with insane consistency. Let's have a look at turning them into videos. So for an example, I've got this image of me as a knight, and then all you have to do is click on the camera icon. So I put in the camera slowly orbits left, the man looks directly at the camera as it orbits around him. I've done it with Gen 4 and for 10 seconds. I do also use Gen 4 Turbo, which is a lot quicker, but the results in Gen 4 are generally a bit better. And the result looks insane. Now, I'm not looking at the camera like I put in the prompt, but I'm still really happy with how it looks. I've actually made loads of different videos from all of these images that I've been creating. What I love to do with these videos is to use Runway's Act 1 tool to capture my performance and put it onto these characters. I've actually created a video on how to use Act 1, and I'll leave a link to it down below if you'd like to check it out. All you have to do is record yourself, make sure that it's framed up nicely, and make sure you get a good, clean recording. Then you can use this as a driving performance for your videos, and it will animate your characters with the same facial features. Now, you have to make sure that your character has a human-looking face. It won't work on things like animals, say. Generally, most human faces it will work fine with. So here are those videos with my performances in them. So this is a short story called Jack of All Trades. My journey began way back in the Stone Age. Whoa, I was so hot. Then over the many years, I gained enough strength to become a noble knight. Oh no, I really need the toilet. Being a knight sucks. Heck. I even delved into the dark arts as a wizard. Oh hey there, want to see something cool? Check out this sweet smoking orb, it's pretty cool huh? Then as the years passed, I needed to find a job, so I became the world's best Uber driver, which led me to becoming a professional racer. Oh, look who's joined the race, Alan the Alien for the win, oh yeah. So who knows where my future lies? I'll be Jack. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. And it shows that Runway is becoming this complete filmmaking tool and it's just so much fun to play around with. If you'd like to know more about this process, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make sure to make a video about it in the future. So we've reached the end of the video and I hope you can see just how powerful this runway reference tool is. If you have any tips or tricks on how to use it, then please leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. My name is Jack and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.